swarms of venomous scorpions injure hundreds. Egypt hit by a plague of scorpions. Killer storms drive deadly scorpion swarms into homes. A scorpion plague in 2021? Now those are some catchy headlines. I mean, it made you click on this video and these news sites, just like me, only get paid when you click. A swarm of scorpions in Egypt will conjure images of the plagues of ancient biblical times. And the headlines? Well, they essentially write themselves. If you haven't already seen the story, the city of Aswan, Egypt, which has over one and a half million people in the city and surrounding areas, and is located in southern Egypt along the Nile River, has a very hot desert climate, which makes a very comfortable home to all kinds of species of scorpions, snakes, and spiders. Now on November 12th of 2021, this area was hit by a major dust storm followed by torrential rains and even some hail. This caused flash flooding all around the area, destroying roads, homes, businesses, and putting people's lives in jeopardy. And beyond that, it also destroyed the burrows and homes of many different species of scorpions and other arachnids. Now these scorpions sought out refuge by looking for dry, dark places that they could hide. And many of them found this shelter in the homes and buildings in and around the city. The Deathstalker scorpion and the fat-tailed scorpion are the main focus of all of these news articles. But this extreme weather would have also sent any ground-dwelling spiders, snakes, reptiles, or any invertebrate, really, looking for a safe harbor during the storm. Scorpions like this typically live under rocks, branches, or debris close to the ground, where they can dig out a small burrow in the sand or dirt and hide from potential predators during the day, as well as providing an escape from the relentless heat of the sun. Once the sun sets and the air begins to cool, these scorpions will venture out of their dens and begin hunting for prey and seeking out a mate. Typically, scorpions and spiders will avoid all human interaction at all costs, or they will remain motionless in hopes that they blend into their surroundings to avoid any confrontation with a human which they most likely perceive as a very large predator. Initial reports stated there were over 500 people injured and at least five deaths attributed to the sting of these scorpions. Then a few days later, that fatality count was pulled back to three deaths. But still, I was finding that pretty hard to believe. It is true, the death the stalker scorpion and the fat-tailed scorpion are very hot, meaning they have some of the most powerful and dangerous venom of any scorpions in the world. But are they actually deadly? The Deathstalker's venom is a powerful combination of neurotoxins that can cause extreme pain if they were to sting you and inject their venom. Their venom is known to cause nausea, vomiting, headaches, diarrhea, and abdominal cramps, as well as visible swelling at the site of the sting. But it's not all bad news. Their venom is also one of the most expensive liquids on the planet, as it is being studied as a treatment for many illnesses, including brain cancer. But for a healthy person, this is not a deadly sting. The only time their sting is potentially life-threatening is if the victim already has serious health issues, especially breathing issues. And these people may also experience convulsions and fluid retention in the lungs, in which case death can come by means of heart or respiratory failure. The fat-tailed scorpion is very similar in regards to their venom, though they look much larger and intimidating. They also have a neurotoxic venom that can act very quickly, causing paralysis around the injection site, drowsing drooping eyelids, loss of muscle coordination, and abdominal pain. These neurotoxins act on the central nervous system, causing paralysis in the nerves that are responsible for respiration, which ultimately causes death by respiratory failure if left untreated for anywhere from 5 to 15 hours after the sting. But most areas where these scorpions can be found have anti-venom on hand to treat any possible stings. So are people really dying from this plague of deadly scorpions unleashed on this Egyptian city? The short answer is no. This was just sensational reporting by news agencies for attention-grabbing headlines. This is not to minimize the tragedy in that area. Hundreds of people were injured, 
A few people have died, homes and businesses were damaged and possibly even destroyed. But the deaths have been attributed to electrocution as a result of the flash flooding, and the acting health minister, Khalid Abdel Jafar, said in an official statement that no deaths were reported from scorpion stings. Despite the colorful storytelling and the fear-mongering running rampant on the internet, scorpions are not really so much aggressive as they are defensive. They do not track humans with the evil intent of stinging them for no reason. But they are defensive and will use their pincers and stinger to protect themselves from a perceived threat and to protect their own territory. What seems to be the issue here is that two worlds have briefly collided. In an attempt to seek refuge from the flooding which drove them from their low-lying burrows, these scorpions fled to the nearest, dry, dark, cool areas out of an instinct to survive. It just so happens that the nearest safe places were also inhabited by people. When humans and wild animals collide, the results are rarely positive. I imagine people saw these scorpions trying to enter their homes and attempted to stomp on them, kick them out, or use brooms to sweep them away, or maybe even tried to grab them by the tail to remove them from their home, which is an understandable reaction, but a reaction that would make the person appear as a real and imminent threat to the scorpion, which instinctually will attempt to sting the aggressor in an act of self-defense and self-preservation. Also, these scorpions will mostly seek out cool, dark, confined spaces to feel safe, which in an urban environment could mean hiding inside of shoes left by the front door, under furniture, or anything on the ground slightly raised where they could squeeze into. It is possible by simply putting on shoes or reaching underneath something, a scorpion could feel as if its new territory was being invaded, and they may quickly swing their tail to deliver a painful sting to ward off the aggressor. So it is not surprising when the scorpions of the desert were forced into the homes of people that incidents of highly venomous scorpion stings suddenly spiked, causing healthcare officials to secure more anti-venom to treat the hundreds of patients who were unfortunately stung. The influx of patients seeking medical care, not just from scorpion stings, but also from injuries and health issues resulting from this powerful storm, was overwhelming the medical facilities enough that they asked for doctors to return from their vacations, as well as reaching out to neighboring areas, asking them to send doctors as well, all to help with the victims of this storm. But the headline should not be about the deadly scorpions attacking and killing humans, which turned out not even to be true as no humans were killed by a scorpion sting. but rather should be focused on the freak nature of the storm and its direct ties to the climate changes we are experiencing all around the world due to global warming. Incidents like this, abnormal weather patterns causing nature and civilization to collide and share a safe space, even if only momentarily, and the dangers and issues that come from that, will only continue to happen at a higher frequency with possibly even more devastating effects in places all around the world if the issues of global warming are not immediately addressed and quick, effective action is not taken swiftly. Scorpions can look intimidating and their venom can pack a punch for sure. But they are an integral part of their ecosystems and help maintain the balance of nature. They are not our enemy. Our enemy should be the governments and corporations that put profits over people and fiscal opportunity over future survivability. So don't fear the scary scorpions. Fear the greedy and powerful humans whose inaction and defiance of climate change continually cause stories like this to make headlines all around the world. Now, if you wanna learn more about tarantulas and scorpions and maybe overcome your fears, I have a lot of videos on different species you can watch and learn from, and I'll link that right here. As always, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you wanna see more. They're more scared of you than you are of them, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>